Sorry about the uh, short interruption. Um, uh, so I'd like to give a bit of uh, motivation for the speech, for the talk today, uh, before we dive into the uh, nuts and bolts about what the CF acceptance tests are and why one would want to run them. Um, when we are doing development on the core software features uh, on, the, uh, on these teams, we build various tools to uh, facilitate our development and to uh, do the testing uh, for these components and validate that they work. And one of our goals, uh, which we aspire to and which we sometimes even meet, is to make it easier for people in the community to contribute back to uh, the Cloud Foundry ecosystem and uh, submit pull requests. So one of our goals is to make it easier for you to submit a, uh, uh, submit a pull request uh, and validate that your software works. Um, because Cloud Foundry is a rather large piece of software and it can be rather complicated. Um, so this is a great talk to be in if you want to contribute. Maybe you've gone to the uh, Cloud Foundry GitHub pages and you found a component and you've done some development with it, you've played with it a bit, maybe you've uh, put it on your local Cloud Foundry and you, uh, you want to take that next step and contribute it back. Um, this is a talk about the CF acceptance tests. Uh, it's also, you'll get some information if you're interested in learning a bit more how about CF releases are validated uh, before we push them out into the world. Um, and why are we talking about CATS specifically, though? Um, we chose to talk about CATS because CATS is a particular pain point for us in our development process. It's, uh, they're very slow to run, uh, and we'll, we'll get into a bit of why that is. Um, and so... Uh, oftentimes, if you want to validate that your foundation uh, is, um, is, is in a good state, it can take anywhere from half a minute to an hour and a half, which is a painfully, painfully slow development cycle for you to make a change and then wait um, for that long time uh, in order to get a CATS run. And sometimes, uh, if your, the way CATS is configured and the way your Cloud Foundry is configured um, are... Uh, not in alignment, uh, you can get test flakes, uh, which is where tests fail spuriously for reasons unrelated to the correctness of software, and that can be very painful too, uh, as it increases the amount of time that you have to spend validating your releases. Um, so to give a high-level overview of the talk, uh, we're going to start out with a summary of what CATS is, what is intended to do, and what it is not intended to do. Um, then my colleague Mike Chu is going to get into a bit of the nuts and bolts about how to set it up, um, how to troubleshoot your cats uh, when they go wrong. And then finally, we're going to finish with a uh, short demo where we're going to take a pull request that was actually contributed to the cloud controller, and we are going to just step through running cats um, for, that, uh, uh, for that pull request and how you would use them to validate it. So the first part is, what is cats? Um, so cats is an... In intended to demonstrate the platform is capable of doing the things it is supposed to do. Um, and so once you've run CATS and you've had a green test run, uh, this means that on the user level, most of the things that you expect your Cloud Foundry to be able to do, to push applications, to bind services, to route uh, traffic to the different components inside the Cloud Foundry, um, that it is proven that all of those things can work. Uh, it is uh, written in Go. It's maintained by the release integration team. Um, just a bit of trivia about the, the CATS test suite. Um, and the one thing that uh, should specifically be known about CF acceptance tests is it is intended to validate releases of Cat, uh, Cloud Foundry. Um, and so this gets confusing sometimes because of the way that CATS tests that software. So usually what happens is uh, I get an a environment with a Bosch director somewhere, and then I have to deploy my software onto that uh, environment, and then I run uh, my CATS tests, and they make requests against that environment and exercise the behavior of that environment. So because of this, um, there's often a bit of confusion, because it seems like we are trying to test that deployment. Uh, but the design of the test suite is intended to test 
the software that is underneath it. So I think the next slide is going to go a bit more into what I mean when I say this. Um, when I talk about what CATS is not, CATS is not an SLI or a service level indicator for your platform. It is not intended to say that uh, because I have run CATS, I know I can handle this much traffic or my performance of my platform has these kinds of guarantees. I can handle this many apps. Um, it's just supposed to validate that the software that you're running can uh, perform a CF push, can bind a route, um, can do the basic things that a developer needs to do when using Cloud Foundry. Um, one of the reasons how come it's not a good SLI is because uh, during the course of running CATS, your platform will be bombarded with an inhuman number of app pushes and other interactions uh, via the API. And this traffic is probably never going to be realized on your platform out of an automated mode like you might find in CATS. Um, so even if you did want to or try to use it um, uh, as a service level indicator, it would be a, a terrible choice for that. Uh, the second thing is CATS is not a smoke test for your platform. So you say, okay, maybe it's not going to tell me how good my performance is, but it can tell me whether or not there are any problems with my platform. Um, and CATS is closer, to being a, is closer to being a good test for this than it is to being a good test for an SLI, but it is also not a good idea to do this um, because CATS uh, can sometimes change some of the underlying configuration of your platform. So for example, the security groups test uh, will change the security groups of your uh, platform, which is usually something you don't want to do on your production environment. Uh, and so it's not a good way to validate that any particular deployment of Cloud Foundry is good. Um, to put this all into a single mantra, CATS is about validating software. It's not about validating deployments. It's an excellent tool if you're doing development work and you want to know, um, does my distribution of Cloud Foundry work? Does, uh, uh, does the pull request that I'm going to submit break anything? Uh, but it's not a very good test for answering the question, how good is my Cloud Foundry uh, deployment? So now I'm going to hand it off to Mike for the next section. Right, so now that we have our dev changes, we're ready to test our dev changes. So how do we get started? How do we set up and run CATS? Um, CATS uses a configuration file. It's a JSON file. Um, it's called the integration config. And in it, we have some required properties that enables CATS to properly target and push apps to your Cloud Foundry deployment. Um, there's also some additional optional test runtime settings uh, so that we can have more flexibility in the way we run this test suite. So as you can see here, we can specify user, um, space, org, and some timeouts. And we'll talk more about these timeouts in later slides. But most importantly, we have a list of test suites. Um, these test suites you can choose to whether enable or disable. And so, yeah, that's basically your integration config. Next time you are filling out that pull request, you know, it says run and, cast pa run and pass cats. Uh, all you need is this integration config, a running Cloud Foundry, a cup copy of the CF acceptance test repo, and you're basically good to go. Um, so we wanted to talk a little bit more about these test suites. Uh, this is just a very small subset of the test suites out there. Uh, in fact, there's over 20 test suites in CATS. And this really begs the question of, you know, when I'm validating my software, do I have to test against all of these test suites, right? Like as average contributors to Cloud Foundry, our dev changes most likely does not touch all of these test suites. And so does it really make sense for us to run everything. Um, a better question is, you know, to properly validate my dev changes, is there a smaller subset of suites that I can be running instead? And for that, it really helps if we categorize all the test suites. So first off, we have the default suites. Uh, these four suites are enabled by default. They're very simple. Um, they're basically signing the checks to make sure that your uh, deployment is uh, healthy and uh, functional in the most basic way. Next up, we have the special deployment suites. Uh, these suites, um, prior to running them, you need to have some sort of additional manifest or deployment setup. Uh, in other words, for example, uh, you need to deploy an isolation segment or set up a hub before you can successfully run these test suites. But the third category is 
called, or quote unquote, GA features. Um, and this is just a list of all the other suites. Uh, this, this all together lets us exercise um, all the basic user facing end to end features using the CFCLI. And so, you know, from the previous slide, we have some categories, and we're now asking ourselves is it, is it enough to simply run the default suites? Well, like I said before, like the default suites are more of a sanding check than anything else, and it doesn't give us enough confidence that our dev changes didn't somehow leak into another functionality or another CF component. And so Tim and I spent quite some time, and we came up with a more comprehensive list of suites to run. Um, our goal behind this list is that we want to encourage developers to uh, enable as many suites as possible on their default Cloud Foundry deployment. And so we have these special case suites here, and that is intended to be more of a enabled by, on a case-by-case -case basis, um, depending on your deployment and depending on your dev change. But for the most part, we hope that this list of suites to run uh, provides more clear guidelines for future contributors as to you know, what, what do we expect when um, you submit that pull request. Um, but basically, once you have your list of suites, you're ready to run cats. Uh, you know, you're excited, you're hyped, but it takes a really long time. And it takes a really long time because it has lots of tests, which creates lots of CF pushes, um, which means lots of waiting. And lots of waiting makes us sad. Uh, developers feel like it's an expensive operation to make on your daily workflow. And as a result, they become discouraged from running cats. And so what we're here today to do today is that we want to convince you guys of some of our workflows and how we can achieve quicker iteration and faster feedback. And so typically what we do is start off with focusing a test or a specific suite. Uh, you go through the standard red green process, you know, uh, watch it go red. Uh, make your change, watch it go green. This is a very quick and cheap way to um, validate your change. But once you're done validating your change on that specific test, you can now run the full suite. Uh, what we like to do to significantly cut down the runtime is to run it in parallel with multiple nodes. Um, in the example here, we're running in eight nodes. Typically, the number of nodes depends on the capacity of our Cloud Foundry deployment and also the machine that's running the test itself. And uh, just as a, a, a guideline, you know, your vanilla out of the box latest CF deployment based Cloud Foundry can handle anywhere between six to eight nodes. Um, in CI, where we have larger deployments, we usually run CATs with 12 or more nodes. And, and 12 more, or more nodes significantly uh, makes this uh, test run much faster. Um, but it also raises the question, you know, why, why are we stopping at 12, right? Why not run this thing with 30 nodes? Uh, well, when you introduce too much parallelism, when you introduce too many nodes, uh, you're susceptible to a lot of unexpected errors. And there's lots of ways you can deal with these errors. Uh, so first off, for every failing test, CATS will print out the, all the CLI commands that it executed and all of its output. And so, for example, in the screenshot we have here, we have a red test because it failed to uh, CF auth. And this is likely just because we passed in a incorrect user credential in our integration config. Um, however, not, not every test error is this simple and straightforward. Um, and in the case where we're running cat, all of cats with 30 nodes, you'll get a lot of unexpected and inconsistent errors. A uh, really common one is staging error. You'll see a lot of insufficient runs or insufficient resources. And that's because CATS puts a lot of strain on your system. And when you're doing so many concurrent app pushes at once, uh, it can quickly drain the resources of your environment. And so when you find yourself running into errors that you, are, you don't really expect or errors you see sometimes but not in another time, then we suggest decreasing down your nodes, you know, minimize a little bit of that parallelism or specifying longer timeouts in your integration config. Uh, this is so that you can allow cats to have enough time to perform those operations. Uh, suppose you actually do want to have a Cloud Foundry deployment that can handle more than you know, 12 nodes, or you want to allow more parallel workload on your deployment. Uh, there are two known bottlenecks 
Um, first of all, it's the Diego cell memory, not uh, running out when you have too many app pushes, and also API nodes, um, not having enough API VMs there to handle all the concurrent requests. And so as a general rule of thumb, uh, scaling up these two instance groups will allow you to have more runs, uh, faster runs, and um, be less likely to run into those flakes. And you know, we talk a lot about how cats is uh, how we do cats on our local machines, um, but cats are far beyond just our local machines. Uh, in fact, beyond our local machines, we have a team uh, concourse pipelines. Um, in our concourse pipelines, we use we run cats. Uh, there's a concourse resource called the cats concourse resource, and uh, it makes running cats extremely easy. Um, beyond the dev teams, there's a team called Release Integration that runs and maintains cats on a master pipeline, and they run cats anytime bet between 10 to 20 times a day, and so they've really tried to optimize the way that they run cats. Um, so we talked a lot about how we, a lot of this is conceptual, um, and I'll hand it back to Tim to put some of this into practice. Uh, so to conclude, we're just going to do a quick demo. Um, this is an actual pull request that was submitted to the cloud controller. Um, I'd like to say a, a bit of thanks to Alex Blees, Jen Spinney, and Sam Gunaratne uh, for contributing it to the project. Um, so uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. Um, and I've pre-recorded this uh, because, well, you'll see. Um, uh, so we're going to start out by going to the integration config, which we've been talking about. Uh, and here I'm just going to search for true to find out which, which things we have turned on. So we've got apps turned on, uh, detect, uh, internet dependent suite. We've got the persistent app suite, routing, uh, services, SSH, SSO, the task test suite. So we have a large subset of the tasks uh, of the suites turned on. Um, so we're just going to set our config to be the path to that file. And we can run our first test run uh, against a Cloud Foundry that's deployed. So a bit about this Cloud Foundry. Uh, we're running it against a Bosch Lite, which is a lightweight um, development uh, Cloud Foundry, lightweight way to deploy a Cloud Foundry. Um, uh, right now, we're running uh, a vanilla CF release, so we haven't done anything strange or interesting to it yet. Um, and this test run should establish a green baseline so we know that the platform and the code that we're running against works with this version of the test suite that we have. And we passed. Uh, and so the reason how can we screencasted this is because that took over an hour to run. Um, and we don't have over an hour of your time. Um, so uh, after this, uh, we're going to check out um, a change that our contributors made to the CF acceptance tests. Uh, repo. Um, so most of the time when you make a change, uh, probably just fixing a small bug or um, uh, changing the documentation, you probably won't need to change uh, the CF acceptance tests. Uh, however, this change uh, is a change from the open service broker API that the cloud controller needs to know how to handle. And so they want, we want to make sure that in the future, the platform will continue to be able to handle this. So they chose to go through the time to contribute uh, this change to the CF acceptance test. So they changed uh, a bit about the JSON schema um, that is uh, being accepted by the cloud controller. Um, the point of this is not necessarily to go into the change that they're making, but uh, to talk a bit more about the process. So uh, we made the change to the test. Uh, so we're going to focus this test suite so we can get a quick feedback app while we're doing our development on that change. Uh, oh, sorry, a fix, fix a uh, fast feedback loop on the change that we're making. Um, and so we're going to run it again. Uh, you notice I have three nodes, and I just changed it to one node. Um, probably doesn't matter when I'm running just one test, uh, but Bosch Lite, because it is running on a virtual box VM and doesn't have many VMs in the cloud like most Cloud Foundries do, uh, it is uh, very pr prone to running out of resources, which is one of the flaws that CATS has. Um, so I'm running it uh, at a very low parallelism to put as little stress on the system as possible. So the test failed, which is what we expect because we haven't made the change yet. Um, uh, so now 
uh, we have to go to the other place. Uh, so I'm going to go into the cloud controller and check out um, the changes that they've made. And there it is. Um, they've made a commit uh, that should implement this change so we can interface with the service broker. We make a release. We upload it to our Bosch director, um, which takes a bit of time as well. Uh, and then we go and we find that release, and we have to change the deployment manifest. Um, uh, this is all the Bosch bookkeeping to tell Bosch, basically, uh, to change the code that it is running on some of the VMs. Um, so I change the dev version from 11 to 12, and we do a Bosch deploy. Um, so at this point in time, we should have the new code. Uh, we have the updated test. Um, uh, however, we're not entirely sure whether or not uh, we've got the right thing. Uh, we're doing development. Development is uncertain. People make mistakes. Um, uh, no, very often we don't fully understand the system we're working with. Um, so we're going to start out by just running the one test again um, to make sure that that red test goes from being a red test to a green test. And at least the code does the very narrowly defined thing that we want it to do. And after a bit of time, um, it passed. Um, and uh, that gets us to uh, the last test run, which we're going to do now, um, where we unfocus that test. And we're just going to run everything again at the end. Um, so this is to validate that the change we made didn't break something else. Um, in this case, it's a rather small change. We're probably fine. Um, uh, but it's always good to do another run at the end to make sure uh, that you're not breaking uh, your friends uh, who sit next to you uh, and are helping to contribute. Um, this last test run is usually best outsourced to a continuous integration system. Um, so. If you don't have an hour and a half to sit around and run cats again, uh, you can say, this is my change. I want to go try to run it um, and give it to an automated system that will deploy a Cloud Foundry with your change and do that change. So uh, we did it. Hooray, the pull request passed the test. Um, and uh, it looks like when we go to GitHub to contribute our code back to Cloud Foundry, we can check that box and said, yes, I did run cats. And cats said that this thing does not break Cloud Foundry. Um, so that concludes our talk. I hope that next time you run cats, um, your pain is at least a bit less. Um, we are aware that uh, these things are hard to run. This is a problem that we faced as well. Um, so uh, you can reach us on the Cloud Foundry open source Slack uh, if you have any questions. Another excellent resource is the release integration channel. They are responsible for this test suite. Um, and they have spent a lot of time trying to make it faster, uh, trying to make it easier to use, um, both as people who want to contribute to it and as people who are running it to validate their Cloud Foundry deployments. Um, so now we're going to stick around a bit and answer any questions you guys might have. Um, and yeah, that concludes our talk. Thank you.